What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So I thought at the end of the week, why not finish it with going over my trade? So how did my week actually end? Well, I took a total of two, four, six, eight, ten trades. From those ten trades, I lost one, two, three trades, uh, four trades I lost. I won four trades and I had two break-even trades. I managed to finish the week off at a total of 10.78% profit minus 0.78 well it was actually 7.5 from my final trade today so I'll go over them with you and let's see what's happened so my first trade of the week was on pound swiss franc I took a sell opportunity as part of a trend continuation you can see here I clearly lost this trade um, for a loss of 8 pips so 2% loss on this trade and this trade was taken on the 25th of the 5th. Now, when I look at the high time frame analysis, I can clearly see that the market structure was attempting to break some previous structural highs. We had then this push phase, lower high phase. And as you can see here, marked up by this black box, this was where the price broke the previous low, came back, respected this level, but failed to make the new high. And once we made this new lower low, I was looking for this pullback and I started to identify these rejection wicks. Then we had this break out of this structure and break back into this structure. And immediately when I saw that, I was just like, look, this is looking good. Break out, break back in, pull back and let's continue. Now, I did have this opportunity to go break even on this trade, especially when I identified price was not breaking this level. But, you know, I didn't go break even and I decided to take the risk. We did hold this level for at least two hours with these wick rejections. So I was feeling good for it. But unfortunately, we stopped out. But anyway, it's part and parcel of trading. You're not going to win every trade. And yes, we took a 2% loss on this. Um, the next trade that I took was on pound USD. Now, the first trade that I took, don't look at this big one up here. We'll come back to this one in a bit. Let's look at this one here. Now, you probably have seen me post this on Instagram, but this was a second trade I took for a profit of 6%, a 1 to 3 risk reward ratio trade. Um, and as you can clearly see, we had a key level here in the market. Price was failing to break above. And from the higher time frame analysis, you can clearly see that the structure of this market was to the downside. But when we started violating these previous structural highs, we could see that there was a lot of pound strength, dollar weakness, especially at the start of the week. Actually, no, this was going into Tuesday. And then I decided to take the continuation of uh, off of the back of this break. And as you can see here, we did do pretty well. Now, I'm not going to talk about this because, uh, you know, I mean, if I held this, it would just have been shut down, but I didn't, unfortunately. And I didn't even hold it for the closest hourly candle. I just literally set my take profit at this level where price was failing to break before in the past and um, just locked it in at one to three for a 6% profit. I mean, if I held this, it would have been insane, but would have, could have, should have, I didn't. Anyway, so I took this win pretty good. So for the day, I was up 4%. Uh, that's not true. At this moment in time, I was up 4% on the day. And um, I decided that, you know what, let's close the trade and let's look for an next setup. So we'll come back to pound USD. The third setup that I took on the Tuesday uh, was on USD CAD. And it was this one here. Again, feeling a bit bitter. I didn't hold this trade. And again, I didn't hold it for the hourly close. But you know what, on this trade here on USD CAD, I managed to bank 3.2% on this trade, close out some of the profits along the way, and the risk-to-reward ratio, actually I never closed out profits, the risk-to-reward ratio was only 1.8. So, you know, I can see the market structure was clearly to the upside here on the hourly. We started to break some of these structural lows after the consolidation, and then I saw price breaking into this level, and I was just looking for price to come back and tap it. If we scale down to the lower time frames, you'll see here, the price broke this level, came back, created that lower high, and then I went in for the kill. Um, pretty good trade. And this was on Tuesday also, which was the 26th. So this was USD CAD. Managed to bank 40 pips, so another plus 3.2%. So for the day, I was actually up, um, I think, seven, just over 7%. And then something happened. Even though being up 7% in two days was really good i decided to go back to gu for whatever reason and i look for the shorting opportunity now this can happen if you've taken a buy and you've seen the market rally to the upside 
and you haven't taken any more of that profit from the market and then when you see price come to a key level i mean i don't know if it happens to you but it happens to me first things i'm thinking is goodness me if i was in that trade i would have been laughing even though i'm seven percent up for the day plus seven percent sorry by monday and tuesday i was still thinking no 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 no. let me just get this short and just at least get another two percent from this trade i think yeah just over two percent from this trade so another two percent risk on this trade and as you can see my stop loss was above this previous wick here so sorry beg your pardon was up above these levels here let's just make sure this is correct so the stop loss on this was 45 pips yeah this is exactly where it was so it was well out the way um up and around these levels here i think on my mt4 we did actually clear this level um, on my mt4 but it doesn't matter anyway and uh, i short this market the minute price came back here um <laughs> As you can see, I sat in some serious drawdown and I bottled out of the trade. I mean, to be honest with you, if you're up plus 7% in two days, do you really need to be taking a short? Against the overall momentum of the market, the structure is up. Yes, a key level, but this is not yet confirmed. If the market is going to uh, react from this level, then allow the bullish depletion and then look for the retest and then a continuation. And this trade would have been smashed if I held it one. And secondly, if I was patient enough, to wait for this retest but look i'm not perfect i am human and i also have emotions that i have to learn to control on a daily basis so that was that closed out at break even i think we was coming into the evening times and i just didn't want to get stopped out by spread so this trade was closed by the evening anyway moving on to the next day we're on wednesday now i took a trade on usd swiss franc so please ignore this one here let's focus on the one in the pit chart and as you can see here this was a level in the market high time frame analysis clearly see that the structure of the market was pushing to the downside we've had this pull back into this level here that actually uh is that true now we could see the market was pulling back here and i started to look at the break of this consolidation so let's get this right we had this consolidation this was the break and i was looking for the retest and that's when i took the sell and as you can see i was spiked out of this and then the market went down. Anyway, you lose a trade, right? USD Swiss franc, minus 15 pips on this at a 2% loss. Um, I think it was around 15 pips, something like that. 15 pips here. The exit on this trade, oh, I don't have an exit other than pips. It was about 15 pips, okay? So this was a trade that I lost. So starting on Wednesday, I was down 2%, back down to around 5% for the week. So not too bad anyway, so continuing to manage risk. And then I moved on, and as you can see here, again, same kind of thing as um, USD Swiss franc, the pair we just, uh, I took a loss on, and this was the same day, consolidation, break of the consolidation, looking for that retest, and again, don't focus on this trade, we'll come back to it. As you can see here, it was a pretty decent trade. Nice quick rejections, retest this level, and then straight back to the downside. Don't ask me why I only took 2.2 2.26%. I closed this trade out on Poundcad at a win of 4.48% profit. So around this time now, I was up almost 10% for the week on Wednesday. Um, I decided to call it a day um, on Wednesday, and now we move on to Thursday. So Thursday's trade was on USD Swiss franc. So let's go back to USD Swiss franc again. And this was the second trade that I took. Now, I don't know what it is with me and Swiss franc, but we don't get along. And for some reason, every time I take trades on it, I always get spiked out. And then the market goes in my direction. As you can see here, I took this trade again, retested this level, expecting this key level to hold, got whipped out of this, and then it absolutely tanked. Um, on this trade, I actually took a full loss. So on this trade, it was minus 13 pips. And I took a 2% loss, bringing me down to just over 7% profit for the week. Anyway, managing risk was still doing pretty well. Um, moving on from this trade, I then went on to take a trade on Euro New Zealand dollar. Um, and this is this trade here. Now, with this trade, I took a break even trade. So, first break even of the week. Yes, no. Pound USD was the first break even trade of the week. Oh, yes, I've already showed you this one. Okay, so Euro New Zealand dollar was the second break even trade of the week. As you can see my red line here, 
this was a one to one risk toward ratio and I locked it in at break even. Now, the reason I locked it in at break even as opposed to allowing it to breathe was because I already had taken the loss on USD Swiss franc. So I didn't want to be sitting in this trade hoping that it will go, um, go in my direction. Wait, obviously I want it to go in my direction, but I didn't want to see it pull back and then go in my direction. I just at this time wanted it to go in my direction with the momentum of this hourly open. And as you can see, we got to break even, locked it in, and then we got tapped out, and then it, again, as usual, pumps to the upside. But that was Euro New Zealand dollar. And then I took a third trade, and that was on gold. And this was my final trade on Thursday. As you can see here, um, the market structure was pushing back to this consolidation again. So again, what I attempted on USD Swiss franc didn't work. Euro New Zealand dollar, it worked. And on gold, we can see it worked. And I managed to close this trade out manually. I was looking for a second target on this, but I didn't take the second target. Uh, I didn't hold it for the second target. And let me just look at my stats. Uh, yes, I was already down 2% for the day. So banking 3.10% uh, profit on this trade. So I managed to recoup the loss on USD Swiss franc and I uh, put myself into 1.10% profit for the day so we're sitting pretty good let's do the calculations now so um yeah, first day we was minus two percent and then we managed no let's do it like this so it was six minus two percent then we managed to get 3.2 percent on um usd cad again another minus two percent plus 4.48 percent then we lost another two percent then we plus 3.10%. That's true, exactly true. 10.78% on the close of Thursday. And this was a trade that I took. And then today is Friday. This was the last trade that I took on pound CAD again. As you can see here, uh, we had this push to the upside, um, this break back below this lower, uh, higher low, making this lower low. And I was looking for that retest continuation to the downside for first targets at these previous structure levels. And for this trade, I only risked 0.78%. Um, so even if I lost this trade, I was still 10% profit for the week. And in actual fact, I did lose this trade. So I lost 7 point, sorry, 0.75%, leaving me with a total profit for the week of 10% profit. So not a bad week whatsoever, even though we had four losses, four wins and two break-evens we still done pretty well um what's the stats on this uh it doesn't even matter um but yes so pretty good week pretty good week so i just want to say to you all you know remember i mean i say this all the time this is just all about the numbers and to be honest with you guys if you've got a systematic strategy that's proven and works. It really doesn't matter whether you take losses or break even trades. As long as your risk toward ratio is good and you're able to continue being patient and disciplined, your profits are going to come. And two weeks in a row now, I've shared my trades, trying to be as transparent as possible, obviously with the time available to be able to record these. But last week, again, managed to bank 10 point, or let's just call it 10%, and again, another 10% this week. And to be honest with you, this isn't even the best results that I'm capable of getting. Um, so we can only get better. If not, we'll take the losses, we'll take the break-evens as much as they come. I don't really care because I know eventually the wins are coming. The risk to reward ratio is gonna absolutely crush those losses and break-even trades. And I'm just gonna be making what I need to be making. So I hope everybody's had a fantastic week. I hope you've enjoyed this review of my trades. Um, tomorrow I'll be releasing the second series of learn a powerful strategy in 20 minutes and we'll be looking at the nasdaq 100 so i hope you guys will be available to watch that tomorrow it'll be posted on youtube but other than that enjoy your weekend and as I always say if you like this video please smash that like button subscribe and until next time take care